here's Iowa. Poor, lowly Iowa. They were spurned by the kid once, went to Alabama, played. And then for whatever reason, when, of course, Nick Saban, you know, re- you know retires, says, well, I'll go back home to Iowa and play my next two years. <clears throat> Gets a hero's welcome. Somebody said he was doing car commercials within a couple of weeks of his return to Iowa. Quote, unquote, took all this money, which no documentation. We don't know if he got a dime. We don't know if he got $1,000. We don't know what he got. Took all this Iowa NIL money and left. Hasn't paid it back. I mean, bull crap. How would anybody know this guy's personal whatever? And, you know, he spurned us again. And it's just like, Jesus, God, grow up. I mean, this is 2024, and this is where it's at. And um, this, again, you know, hit the reset button. This is <clears throat> this is what the presidents and the athletic directors brought upon themselves from the moment California passed that law five years ago, and they just continued to kick the can down the road and never dealt with it. And now look what you got. Look what you got. People are going to be running away from these sports uh, in record fashion, although it doesn't seem to be. The controversy seems to be driving more interest in this stuff, even as people are just disgusted and turn their heads from it. They can't stop watching it. The TV ratings just keep going up and up and up. So, you know, add this to the list of BS incidents number 234 of – I can't believe this is possible. I can't believe this is happening, but it definitely is. And uh, I feel bad for the Iowa people. They got they got taken once. They got taken twice. And uh, the kid goes on spring break with his former teammates from Alabama and says, damn, it's cold in Iowa during the winter. Damn, they work us hard up here. You know, God, we're only going to be eight and four. God, our offense is going to – Bro, your offense is going to suck. Your offense always suck. You know, I mean, just, 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 it writes itself. I mean, everyone knows what happened. Then they twisted his arm and he's back to Alabama. So, you know, it's interesting to me. Does he just stop going to class at Iowa and out? You know, credits, Schmeditz, who needs credits? You know, whatever. I think that is, whole whole thing's a mess. I, I think the, the one rule that the NCAA still has, whether they can force it or not, is you'd still have to have the academic requirements to transfer, even though they get, they've get they gotten rid of the uh, the need to uh, sit out. If you're a multi, multi-time transfer, you still need to be like on course and in school. But as you guys talk about Iowa, the way they're being treated, it reminds me of the way Jenny treats Forrest Gump. She just keeps, she just keeps going off and then he welcomes her back and poor – Poor Iowa. Now this is where we need noon to go. You've heard it a million times, Jenna. This Kayden. is where we need noon. <clears throat> I love you, Kaden. Um, but <laughs> I, I also am not going to get upset about this because paper pay for play does not exist. It's not a thing. It's not supposed to be a thing. So if somebody wants to go take money from Iowa and then leave, go do it. There's no. I don't have to go play for Iowa to accept money from an Iowa collective. That's come on. What are we talking about here? I, I thought we were on the up and up. This is just you wanting me to um, help your brand. This isn't about me playing for your favorite football team. This is about me helping uh, a charity. Uh, your car dealership it has nothing to do with me going and playing for a football team. So wh- why are you upset? Why is a collective upset? Why can't I continue to, you know, help you out? I'm going to be, I'm going to have, my image is still, you know, I'm still well known. I, I'll be I'm in still Alabama. One of the most famous athletes ever to come from Iowa. Just I'm not Caitlin well, Clark, but so like I, I can't uh, I can't get upset. And I do think you definitely have collectives talking talking to outlets and to reporters, and they do get mad because they are investing in this player for obvious reasons. And so when something turns, uh, when somebody turns their back on them, they don't like that. People with money do not like when that happens to them and they'll reach out and, and share their side of the story, accurate, inaccurate, whatever. Uh, um, but 
this is part of the the new world now. And it just kind of saved his vote because Alabama's coming back for what was there. Um, I don't know if y'all, you know, Alabama's getting a, there's a couple guys who left Bama in the transfer portal that are, that they, Bama's coming back for the, for those guys to, to come back. Hopefully we, we pass that. Yeah, that statement by uh, the coach is pretty funny. He's like, you know, he only just, you know, crippled our entire NIL department that, you know, managed to scrape up enough money to get here and, and left with it. But it's not that big of a deal. Um, I forget what he said that the silver lining was, but it was pretty funny. There wasn't much of a silver the lining there. He, he didn't have the playbook, which nobody. There you go. Really, there you go. Nobody's really, nobody's afraid of the, the offensive prowess. That, um, that's what he was tongue in cheek saying that we don't have to change anything in the offense now. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, yeah, that was a good joke. I didn't realize Kirk Ferentz was a damn comedian, but that was that was a real smart sentence right there. Uh, was that I'm the offensive coordinator for Iowa? Is that who we're talking about? The head coach. They finally the fired his son, I think. That was but, uh, but they're okay. keeping the playbook. <laughs> so Kirk's been there since before I got. Were they complaining about how much they paid the the offensive lineman from Alabama? Now he's going back. Like a hundred thousand, they're freaking over. <laughs> Here's the thing, and James knows this as well as I do, and I know this for like especially on this kid for a fact. What are we talking about? He ain't been there long enough to get paid. Ding ding ding. His dad oh. didn't get paid the the whole amount up front. I know that for another fact. Athletes are entitled because we treat athletes and entertainers differently than we treat everybody else. We will stay if I was eight, if I'm 18 years old and I become and I join a truck driver's union, or if I become this or I become that, I pay taxes, I pay my union dues, I vote as a union, I do this other thing. The only time people say, "Oh well, they got to pay taxes," "Oh well, they got to do this," so they got is when it comes to student athletes. All of a sudden. The 18-year-old that can join the military and pay taxes and do all this, now he's inept to be able to do these things. You could actually have the argument that somebody works for the university if you just treat them like what they are. They, it, it's, they do everything else. I mean, people are talking about it because it's Alabama and it's Caden Proctor. He's like, you know, they're starting left tackle as a freshman and things like that. But, like, the vitriol of the conversation and commentary has been very incredibly muted, which I always want to wonder, what if it were Miami? You know what I mean? Like, if it were Miami with a player of that same caliber, would the conversation be as muted and accepting of things? I'm not quite sure. And maybe that's me projecting. I will accept that, but hey, it'd be like that. Muting and accepting of things from just the general college football public. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, other you know, people with uh, you know podcasts and shows and blogs and you know jobs who you know who who you know cover uh, these sports and everything. Like there, there has not been the level of outrage which I expected to see for from regarding the Caden Proctor and like specifically because it's Alabama, which, you know, Saban built into a dynasty program, which is a, a heritage program in the sport. And then like this player is one of the best players at his position and the longevity because he's a true freshman five-star slides in at left tackle at Alabama goes home to Iowa. Right. And then, yeah, you know, and, and then Iowa admits we tampered with the kid. Like we're admitting our fault in this way, and you know, people are talking about the portal and transfers and da da da. And like, I just expected there to be more, just because there seems to be more energy about all of these individual things with other schools, including Miami. But this story has all of them together. Like, this is a perfect storm. If you wanted to talk shit about, you know, the the state of college football and recruiting and NIL and da da da. Like, if you wanted to, and there are people who want to, like. This situation is presented to you on a silver platter. Like, you couldn't tee the ball up better for, like, tee it high and let it fly. Yes, in this day and age of NIL offers, and we know that he's being compensated to some degree, you would have a better idea than I would for sure. It may have even cited those numbers elsewhere, but that something better came along. Or that there's some kind of soured relationship or something happened, some kind of incident, some kind of 
confrontation or something that he doesn't like about um, his experience thus far at Iowa. Those are the only two reasonable conclusions I can come to. And I don't know Caden um, very well personally. Um, know some people in his camp a lot better than I know him. But this type of a move, if it occurred, would, to me, reek of this era as it relates to NIL. Like, that's the only that's the only explanation where it's like, okay, yeah. Like, I guarantee you, there are inst- – I know, I mean, there, I can tell you with authority, there are schools that have offered him more money than what I was able to give him as it relates to NIL um, opportunities. So, I mean, like I can't put a number on that exactly. So, so let's just play theoretical. Say, say uh, LSU got win back in whatever that was January that Caden was going to enter the transfer portal. And they said, Hey, we'll get you 2 million here. Um, a guaranteed 2 million to come here and you have to play at least, two years to get that 2 million, but we'll give you 2 million. We got 2 million waiting for you. You know, maybe Iowa said, Hey, we, we can't get we, the swarm can't offer you 2 million, but we've got opportunities that can at least get you maybe 1.5 million over the course of your career. And he's like, Hey, I want to go home. That's enough for me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fret over half million. I'm just, this is not based on it. This is just me playing fantasy land. But what I'm saying is, Think about that scenario, why he could he might still pick Iowa, even though at the time they were behind in those figures. What if Florida State has come to him in the last few weeks and said, we've got four million waiting for you, four million guaranteed. OK, now that changes the game, right? It changes the game. Yeah. So well, I'm not saying that's happened. It could be totally not true. I hope it's not true. Um, but it's not, nothing's unprecedented with stuff like this. Now, nothing's unprecedented. It would be a, he would never live it down if he did this. I mean, what he, what, what happened, I went out of high school with his decision to flip to Alabama was such a firestorm and a, just a total mess on social media, a cesspool for him to be welcomed back was a huge, like huge hurdle to overcome. Could you imagine if he did it again, Mark? Like if he, <laughs> and, and a, couple, a couple items here, Corey related to what you just stated. And then your, your other point in your hypothetical scenario, going back to the hypothetical scenario, I totally get that that has a high possibility, probability of being what's going on to some degree. However, you would think that for somebody who has a definite home school and had some lean because of it being the home school, but decided to go elsewhere. And then, as you pointed out, didn't enter the transfer portal and say, I want to explore my opportunities. And for two, three weeks was out there looking at various options, just boom, I want to come home. That speaks of somebody who, who knows I'm a five-star offensive tackle. I just started at Alabama. I can make money anywhere. I was offered me something that's really good. Sure. There could be more money elsewhere probably is, but this is substantial enough. And this is where I want to be. That's, that's what it looked like. And so you would think if he's still entertaining all these offers and possibly wooed by one of them, that he would have originally stated that I'm just entering the transfer portal and I, I want to see what my options are. But the, but I'm just saying like, yeah, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, he's still, a, what, a 19-year-old kid who's going to be sure. like, he obviously was swayed before. He committed to Iowa. And then was swayed. I'm not saying it was, you know, primarily due to money. Okay. But again, the scenario I, I ran through a minute ago, that could have transpired. And maybe it's a scenario where 
maybe there were higher offers. You know, I gave the example of maybe somebody's offering them three, four million to, to go play for their school. Maybe that offer was on the table before. And then maybe he went to Iowa City and was like, okay, this is not quite as great and luscious as I thought it was going to be, like just over the first three months. You know, he's gone through the strength program, or maybe he's not clicking with teammates or cl- clicking with coaches. Like that could tip the scales enough to where, man, I'm here for half as much and I'm not even, I'm not really even happy. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm not surprised by anything. I mean, it is shocking to an extent, but with, the, again, this day and age, of, there's just so much tampering going on. And I heard you earlier on the show talking about the ACC. This is part of what's wrong with with college football now. Like, I am a big college football guy. You are a big college football guy. But, Mark, the tampering, it's ridiculous. It, it should not be allowed, but it's happening. For anybody who says, oh, I was. You know, I was, you know, got hit with a a small, uh, you know, a minor infraction for tampering with Proctor before. What they got hit with was a coach texting him and saying, keep your head up, young man. Great days are ahead of you. Like, if that's the, that's not what's going on across the country. We have blatant tampering and money offers happening everywhere. That is what's wrong with the sport now. So, I hope that's not what ha- what's happened. We're just speculating, but it is unfortunate. And we've seen a lot of really good coaches like Nick Saban walk away, I think, in, in part due to the current scene landscape of the sport. And, and then the scenario that you just played out more in terms of what he has already done in his flip from Iowa to Alabama, the first go around, and then as, as you were setting up what if this happens again? Because correct me if I'm wrong, he made that original flip on National Signing Day. I think it was the day before. The day before. Yeah. The day before. Yeah. But basically took the fan base right to the wire with this commitment. He did. He did. And I was I was one of the more forgiving people out there because I'm just like, hey, you know what? You're not signed, you're not, you're, you're not signed, sealed, and delivered until you are signed, sealed, and delivered. And I can understand frustration if you've got a good friend of yours who's engaged and their fiance breaks breaks that marriage off at the last second. But guess what? That's better than waiting until after you sign on the dot, dotted line. And so I I just I, I was forgiving to that situation. Now, if that happens again, I don't know how I'll feel. I mean, I will I <laughs> I will not be as forgiving as i was um i think he's a really good young man i i like i said no people in his camp and i think he comes from a good family i know there's been some controversy about his mom and some of the influence she's had on his decision making but i just think money really talks this would be his fourth decision in like a year <laughs> his fourth decision he decides to go to Iowa, then he decides to go to Bama, then he decides to go to Iowa, then he decides to leave Iowa. I mean, that would be four different decisions in the course of a year. Yeah, that's not going to rub people the right way, and he shouldn't expect for it to. That would be, de- and it'll be devastating. It will be devastating to that offensive line. It just will be because he's a big piece. I mean, there's no, there's no question about it. He's a guy that'd be coming in and would be a, a plug and play starter. 